Hello everyone! In this video I want to discuss how to find uh, the definite integral from 0 to 1 x squared dx and this interval actually equals to 1 third and I'm going to show this by using Riemann summation and uh, from other side I'm going to show the application of S2 sum when we can write the sum of squares of numbers uh, in exact form. I hope you're going to enjoy this video and thank you for watching. Hello guys, so if you want to find uh, this definite integral, we need to recover first the definition of this uh, definite integral by using Riemann summation. So we're saying that we have definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. If we can write this integral as the limit of the partial sums. Where I'm taking the sum of f of x i times delta x. In this case, we can see that our function is x squared and our a and b is just going to be 0 and 1. And uh, in this problem, we're going to just apply this definition. But before, let me draw uh, the graph of x squared from, from 0 to 1. Okay, we have this graph. So if you want to uh, solve math problem, first we need to figure out what is our delta x and what is our xi. So let's first find what is delta x. And according to a definition of delta x, delta x is b minus a over n. Or in this case, we have b is equals to 1 and a equals to 0. So I have 1 minus 0 over n. So from here, we'll get that my delta x is equals to 1 over n. The next thing that we need to discuss how to find our xi's. So, in other words, what we are doing, we're taking the whole interval from 0 to 1 and divide this interval by uh, n equal parts. So, uh, we divide by n parts and the length of, of each segment is delta x. Then we want to define our xi. And xi, we're going to define the following way. We're going to say, let's take our delta x. And according to definition of Riemann sum, the xi is a plus delta x times i. In our case, a is just 0, so I have xi equals 0. And delta x is 1 over n, so I have 1 over n times i. So from here, I get that equals to i over n. So I can say that xi is equals i over n. And we can see when i equals to 1, why? Because uh, we start from 1 to n. When i equals to 1, we have 1 over n. So it means this is going to be our x1. When i equals 2, we have 2 over n. So we're adding like this delta x two times. So I'm going to have point x2. And then we can go over or uh, up to n. And you can see when i equals to n, I will get that my x of n is equals n over n equals to 1. So this is going to be our the last one, xn. Okay, and the last thing that we need to find, figure out, we need to find what is f of xi. And f of xi, I'm going to plug in xi inside my function. And f of x is x squared. So I will have, this is equals to x i squared. But from other side, what is xi? xi is one i over n. So we'll get equals to i over n squared. And from here I can get that my f of xi equals to i squared over n squared. Okay. And in this step we found all important information that we need to plug in into our sum. So uh, if we want to calculate this uh, integral, I want to divide this uh, computation into two steps. My first step, I want to uh, evaluate the sum separately without a limit. And then when I'm going to find the value of the sum, I'm going to take the limit of this value to infinity. And I'm going to get the answer that I supposed to get, which is 1 over 3rd. So let's do the first step. Let's find the sum from i equals to 1 to n of this expression. 
here why I was doing this all before I'm going to actually do my computation because right now what I just need to do I just need to plug in all this information so let's do this so I have my sum from i equals to 1 to n f of x i is just i square over n square and what is my delta x delta x is just 1 over n times 1 over n and then uh, in order like to simplify this, let's rewrite the sum, not in the short notation. So when i equals to one, uh, I'm gonna so my first term. So first, uh, so first what I can see that I have n and n is gonna be my n cube. And when i equals to one, is gonna be one square. My second term is uh, two square over n cube. And so on, and my last term is going to be n square over n cube. And since each of these fractions have the same denominator, I can find the common denominator. In this case, I will have n cube plus over, uh, no, uh, on the above, I'm going to have 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus, plus n square. And from here, I'm going to use the formula that I showed you in the preview. So for this one, I'm going to use the formula that 1 square plus 2 square plus n square equals uh, n, n plus 1, to n plus 1 over 6. So the whole top part I can write as n, n plus 1, to n plus 1 over 6. And here, this is over n cube. Then I can move 6 to the bottom and factor uh, these two n. So I will get on the bottom 6n cube. And here we'll have n times n times n. So I factor each of this n. And inside I will have 1 over plus 1 over n times uh, 2 plus 1 over n. Okay, and here I can see that the first thing uh, I have n cube and three n, so n cube. So each of this n gonna get cancelled. So my sum uh, is gonna be equals to one plus one over n. I think I need to erase this. And the times two plus one over n over six. Yes, so we're done with step uh, one. For step two, let's say this is my step two. I want to send my n to infinity. And I can see when I've sent, uh, why I'm doing this because according to the formula, uh, because I'm taking uh, basically what I'm doing over here. Here, uh, I have base times height, so I'm taking this base times height of this function, it's rectangular. I'm taking base times height, it's rectangular. So I'm covering my integral with these rectangulars. And then I'm increasing the number of my rectangulars uh, at the infinity, when I'm going to send my n to infinity. I'm going to get exactly the area under my parabola. So uh, when I'm going to send this n to infinity, I will get this term will go to zero. This term will go to zero, because one over n. So I'm gonna left one times two over six. But this exactly gonna be, I'm gonna cancel two, is gonna be one over three. And we get exactly the value that this uh, definite integral equals to. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I want uh, to give a couple of comments about this problem. So first, this problem was solved in ancient Greece when they calculated the area under the parabola. And they exactly used these sums. So if you want to calculate the integral from 0 to 1 of xk, and here I forgot one important stuff, I need to say dx, because I'm going to integrate uh, corresponding to variable x. Then I want to find what is the exact sum of 1 to the k plus 2 to the k up to n to the k. So, uh, because this trick is super important, like to write this uh, in exact form. In exact form, it means 
I'm going to plug in some variable n and uh, that formula is going to give me uh, the final, like the answer super easily without calculating each of the sums separately. And one of the reasons why I'm doing Jordan canonical form uh, in linear algebra sequence because we can use Jordan canonical form to find the exact uh, form uh, of this sum. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. In the future video, I'm going to move towards proving this formula. Thank you for watching.